Welcome to the enigmatic island of Madagascar, a place where nature dances to its own rhythm, where lemurs leap through lush jungles, and where a world unlike any other unfolds before your eyes. Life in Madagascar is a unique and captivating journey, from the mesmerizing sounds of traditional music to the intoxicating aromas of local cuisine, every moment here feels like none other. But what really makes Madagascar stand out from the rest are the traditions and life of the people here, who constitute mostly of the marina, a Malayo-Indonesian community followed by Kotie, a collective term for coastal communities predominantly of mixed African, Malayo-Indonesian, and Arab descent. Betsileo with smaller minorities of Cormorans, Creole, French, and Indians. So sit back as we explore life from the very beginning to the end, from the perspective of a person born in Madagascar. Let's start with the birth of a baby in Madagascar. Traditionally, when a baby is born here, the umbilical cord and the attached placenta were given to the father of the baby to be buried at the entrance of the compound, but of late, due to urbanization, the umbilical cord is buried anywhere around the compound where it will not be polluted. The umbilical cord is buried to prevent the baby from becoming forgetful. Babies whose cords aren't buried are known as tadipuatra. Newborn children are kept inside the house for a period of approximately seven days after birth, at which time a small ceremony is performed to celebrate the coming out of the child. It is common for mothers to provide food such as tea to supplement their breast milk. To facilitate easy feedings, an infant sleeps with or near his mother and father until they are completely weaned. At that time, the child begins to sleep with siblings. Children are carried on the back of their caregiver, attached by a traditional cloth, lamba. The baby's hair is then cut, and this act is known as alavolo. It is carried out by a person known as the sobolo. A sobolo is the person who has the best hair in the whole family, and he or she is called upon when the baby is three months old to cut off the hair. The ceremony is carried out so that the baby is initiated into the society fully. During the ceremony, the baby's hair is cut off and mixed with honey in a bowl. Later on, any available tuber food is also mixed with the hair and honey, and the family members are obliged to eat this mixture. The ceremony is carried by only family members in a very private ceremony. Traditionally, Malagasy names are mononymous, which means they only have a single name. Historians say that traditionally, separate first names and family names do not exist for people in Madagascar. An individual is given a single name, which is a mixture of both, and that name more often than not reflects their history. When Madagascar became an English and later a French colony, colonial laws were made to encourage the locals to accept binomial names, a given name and a surname. Names were reduced in length when French colonization began in 1896. The shortest names today include Rakotorinsoa, Rakotorinina, Adriana Jaffe, or Adriana Rina and tend to have around 12 characters minimum. Among the marina, the Malagasy people most thoroughly studied by anthropologists, the population is divided into a number of Karanzana, large kin groups, that are defined in terms of the common land upon which the family tomb is located. They are hierarchically ranked and usually named after a single ancestor. Members of the same Karanzana are described as being of one womb, now let's talk about the life of children in Madagascar. Education is compulsory for children between the ages of 6 and 14. The current education system provides primary schooling for five years, from ages 6 to 11. The most popular games among the children in Madagascar are Fanarona, a strategy board game, Raboka, which is a form of the tag game, and Bao, a Mancala game which is a board game played with small stones, a board, or other playing surface. Life for children in Madagascar is full of fun and love, as families across the country consider children precious and a boon from God. Thus, children here grow with a constant and profound sense of being accepted. In a total population of 8.5 million, there is not a single orphanage. The following three years are spent at junior secondary level, following which time a completion certificate is awarded. For many poorer children who managed to make it thus far, this will be the end of school for them, though. The final three years of Madagascan school are no longer compulsory, and these schools are mainly the preserve of richer, urban kids, too. Those who stay at the course receive a baccalaureate. 
the equivalent of a high school diploma and essential for entry into university. There are vocational alternatives to academic middle and secondary schools. These are the Collège Professionnel and Collège Technique. The latter ends with an equivalent baccalaureate too. Some of the popular co-curricular activities among children of this age include soccer, baking, lawn tennis, swimming, Malagasy cooking, volleyball, origami, basketball, chess, and cooking. Crowds of children hit the street in celebration every year for Madagascar's traditional New Year's Day, Alahamada Bay, which takes place in March and lasts for two days. Homes are decorated in lights and friends and family visit to wish each other well. Traditional music and dance plays a part in the festivities. The dating culture in Madagascar is slightly traditional, as generally, men are expected to pursue women and initiate courting. However, modern perspectives are challenging these traditional expectations. The dating scene varies across the country, with coastal regions having a more relaxed approach compared to those in the highlands, where respect for cultural values is more prominent. Family plays a significant role in the dating scene, with many people seeking their family's approval before entering a relationship. Respect and loyalty are highly valued within the dating culture, and casual dating is not as common as it is in the Western world. Next comes the work culture in Madagascar. The typical work hours in the country are from 8.30 a.m. to 5.00 p.m., and the office usually tends to be from Monday to Friday, with a lunch break between noon and 1.00 p.m. Most offices work from 9.00 a.m. to noon on Saturdays. Banks generally work from 8.00 a.m. to 4.00 p.m., Monday to Friday. Most business people in Madagascar greet each other with a handshake. However, if they are close friends or relatives, they will usually hug each other. When there is an appointment, the visitor will invite the host to come to the meeting. If you want to invite a Malagasy acquaintance, let them know a week in advance. However, during the meeting, they will attend on time. They will not expect you to talk immediately, but they will talk with time. In Madagascar, the first person who speaks is always the person who is in a higher position or has the most authority and the highest status. It is also customary for the man to open the door to allow the female to pass through. In Madagascar, a number of traditional pastimes have come up. Morangi is one such sport, a sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat that is popular in coastal areas. Men have historically performed it, but women have recently begun to partake. Many also practice zebu cattle wrestling, Tolanambi. The Madagascans are very friendly and usually love spending time with their relatives and friends whenever they get the time. Aside from sports, people also prefer playing a game like Fenerana, which is a popular board game in the highlands. Now let's discuss the wedding culture in Madagascar. Among the marina in particular, the practice is for individuals to marry within the Karanzan or even within the same sum unit to which they belong. However, certain exceptions always exist. When deciding marriage of the children, firstly, a teenager's parents and elders will decide it's time they had one less mouth to feed and build a small hut for their teenage son, around age 18, or daughter, around age 16, and then arrange with another family for a potential spouse to share the hut. The Malagasy law requires women to be 14 years of age before they are married, lower than the minimum age for males. Vodoindri is the name of the gift given by the groom to the bride's family. It is offered as a consolation to the parents who are losing their cherished daughter. Often, the groom will offer a gift to the bride's brother as well, called Lampi Maso, meaning eyewear. A betrothal then takes place, and all the grown-ups bless the boy and girl by blowing water on them. During a wedding feast, the newlyweds enjoy a meal together. Originally, the meal of newlyweds was served on the fandam banana, or on a clay plate. The meal is usually made up of a mixture of rice with milk and honey. After the meal, guests offer the newlyweds gifts, such as a mattress, wardrobe, bed, and other various utensils. Once the ceremony is over, the newlyweds travel to their homes with their gifts and begin their life together. It's tradition for children to live at home until they get married or want to move out because the families always have very strong bonds. However, many marriages break up. Here, too, the consent of both families is required and divorce brings no disgrace. It is actually more like an annulment, acknowledging that this was not a question of a chicken and its feathers in the first place. Younger children will go to the mother's family, older children to the father's. The wife will also take one-third of what she and her husband have earned in common. 
There is a perception that women in Madagascar should focus on cooking with farming handled by the men. As such, poor Malagasy women are not allowed to assist in the farming on other people's land. However, the Malagasy society is not as sexist as you might think. As a matter of fact, Malagasy society was for a long time matriarchal and the island was ruled by queens. For all the clear distinction of roles, women are treated as equals and have a full voice in all family deliberations. A woman may be the head of a clan as easily as a man. The family cell includes more than the father, the mother, and the children. Uncles and aunts, nieces and nephews are also called family members. A traditional family lives inseparably. Its members settle in the same village and work on the same field. In the past, children were not allowed to live far away from their parents, according to the concept of inseparable family. The Malagasy language has no word for aunt or uncle or cousin. Cousins are all brothers and sisters. Aunts and uncles are mothers and fathers. Children belong to the whole family or clan, not more to the parents than to anyone else. Everyone is related in the very real sense that all the members in this extended family are truly in intimate relationship with one another. Malagasy people are generally religious. Nearly 80% are Catholics and Protestants. The rest of the population believe in God the Creator called Zanahari. If we talk about a traditional meal in Madagascar, the Southeast Asian cultural influence is very much evident as rice is consumed at every meal, typically accompanied by one of a variety of flavorful vegetable or meat dishes. The base of rice is usually served with an accompaniment. In the official dialect of the Malagasy language, the rice is termed very and the accompaniment is called joka. Young people have great respect for the elderly. A Malagasy proverb says, the speech is for the elder and the burden for the young. It is believed that they who will become the ancestors and Malagasy people believe that ancestors are carriers of power and defend life. The wise elders are consulted by the youth for their wisdom and experience. Malagasy people have always taken good care of their parents until their death and after too. Youngsters love to take blessings from their elders and this act is known as Nisodrano Zava Mahari which is loosely translated as blessings are powerful. There are so many things that warranty a blessing from the elders before they are done and some of these activities include when one is going to work in the morning, when they are leaving for some kind of examination, or when someone is traveling to long distances. All of these and many more aims and goals are always considered successful by the people in Madagascar for as long as the blessings are received from the elders, especially the grandparents. The Madagascan people also tend to show a lot of respect to the elders when it comes to meals and this is mostly practiced in the rural areas although it is also not lost in the other parts of the country. When food is served and there is a person who is older than the rest, be it the parents, grandparents or a big sister and brother, no one is supposed to lift their spoons to start eating unless the elders do so. When the elders lift their spoons to start eating, that is when the rest of the people are slowed to lift their spoons and also start eating. In everyday life, the elders are usually given the best part of the meat. Lastly, let's talk about the most difficult part, death. Fama Dahana ceremony refers to the ceremony where bodies of the loved ones are exhumed and re-wrapped before being buried again. The ceremony is one of the biggest ceremonies that is attended by many family members and it comes second after wedding ceremonies. It is carried out every seven or nine years and every family member is supposed to attend it unless otherwise. It is done as a celebration of parenthood in life and in this ceremony, the bodies of the loved ones are exhumed, a lot of food is prepared and eaten while the exhumed dead are still around. Photos are taken and once they are wrapped in the new fabrics, the bodies are carried around by family members as they dance around before they are reburied. And that's a wrap. Let us know which country you'd want us to cover next. Don't forget to like and subscribe.